Linchpin one is the ability to being able to master that. Linchpin number two is leveraging. Linchpin number three to me is leveraging. That to me is the most simplistic way to look at going from zero dollars to you know, 500,000 or above is those three steps. Those are the big three for me. So listen, uh, I want to talk about this, uh, this journey, you know, like this, this going from brand new or making no money in, in real estate. And then what does it look like to go to scale up to 250,000 a year? Well, hundred thousand, then 250, then 500 and beyond. And so I want to get into that today. I think there's a lot of good context or nuance that'll help people take what I think a lot of people look at and get very overwhelmed with and maybe mm. chunking it down so they can kind of visualize, okay, that makes a lot of sense. If I can focus on this part of the process, then from there, uh, making it easier per perhaps. So I think that to get into it, the first kind of uh, bucket, if you will, going from zero to $100,000 in income to me, an agent just has to pick one lead pillar, go all out, focus on that one lead pillar, and it's all about volume. That's it doesn't matter if they're going with, you know, an outbound approach or an inbound approach. And, and well, I guess I take that back. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe it is all about outbound because it's free. It's trading your time for dollars because exactly. the, the assumption is maybe someone doesn't have a lot of funds in the beginning. So Picking an unpaid outbound approach like open houses, like door knocking, like calling for sale by owners, like messaging expired listings on Instagram, as an example. These are all unpaid outbound approach. You go all in on that one pillar, and it's all about volume to get yourself up to 100K. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I believe getting from, from zero to 100, like... It's just brute force. Like That's it. it's just effort and you can just push yourself there. It's not focused as much on skills. It's just put the time in, trade the time for the money. Um, and then we'll get into the next phase. Yeah. How Go bad ahead, do you want it? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and with that too, since it is brute force and you are trading your time for money, like that first kind of, you know, chunk, if you will, the other part of it is investing in your skills and, and and working on those and spending the extra time, not only just going out to find those first couple clients, but spending the extra hour a day, a couple hours a week practicing and role playing. You know, that's where you really kind of lay that foundation of the years to come in, in year one. Yeah. I mean, I think that the people, the average agent still is at like 50K a year there or thereabouts. And I think the the biggest challenge for people not being able to get to six figures is just their lack of, they can't seem to focus on one thing because most of them never been entrepreneurs before. So the character traits aren't there yet. And mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is because they're an independent contractor and they're a new business owner, the start stop kills them. The yeah. start this thing, do it for a couple months, stop. Start this thing, do it for a couple months, stop. And the, the, the reality is whatever it is, have you, if you could just not stop, it's unreasonable for you not to win. It doesn't may, matter if it's if it's paid leads, if it's open houses, if it's door knocking. If you just don't stop, you will win. Colin, you're going to add something to that? All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing-based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six-figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our Listing Agent Academy coaching program. This is a six-month intense coaching system that more than 3,000 agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content. Yeah, it's 
it, it's a little to the side of that topic, but the same thought is, is, and you and I talk about all the time with some of the coaching programs we're in and the groups we're in kind of like the distortion of your perception of money. Like mm. in some of those groups, some of these guys are making so much money that it kind of, it kind of takes you out of context of what most people feel a lot of money is, but for the average real estate agent, it's the opposite, right? It's, mm. it's, agents don't make a lot of money their first year. They're lucky if they mm. close two deals. They're lucky if they make 30 grand. So they, they say, well, you know, if I hit 50,000 year one, I think that's a good goal. And they look at the average agents around them and what they're doing. And they model behavior after the people that they know and they like, because that's the people around them. And so I think another big topic or part of this kind of first section is to be surrounded by people who are doing bigger things. Like, you know, for us, and I say this all the time to agents coming into our program, like, you know, hopefully you woke up this morning and brushed your teeth. Like that's like your, your, your hygiene standard for us and setting goals with agents in our community, like hundred K year one is kind of like that. High. It's that's just the people we try to surround ourselves with. And so I think it's important to be surrounded by people who are trying to hit those bigger things or else it just won't seem possible if you don't. What a great point. Yeah. yeah so I good. mean, because what you just uh, touched on is the reality of our industry in that it, in any brokerage, I don't care what company it is, in any brokerage, in any office across the country, these top producers are like anomalies. They're hard to find. They're like, um, they're like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? People talk about them like, oh man, do you know so and so? Like they're, uh, yeah. like they're tales, you know, like they're yeah. fairy tales. Fairy tale, the, yes, yes, yes. Like the herd that you're surrounded with are a bunch of people that don't sell a lot of real estate. You know, you're yeah. no one has any discipline, no one has any schedule. Everyone's flying by the seat of their pants. Everyone's just crowded around the water cooler. You know, talking bad yeah. about the broker. You know, no one's actually doing anything. And these mm -hmm. top producers are like. Um, they're like anomalies, yeah. anomalies, you know, and, and you don't even see them. And then so that's a really good point. The herd mentality is that of what you just said. I mean, most people aren't doing very much. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, and maybe this kind of argues with your point a little bit, but I would say if you surround yourself with people, only people that are too far ahead, though, it can be really discouraging. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's important to surround yourself with somebody that is at the same level, but with the same drive as you, as well as people that are farther ahead so that you're not, I don't know, you're, you're not always surrounded by somebody so far ahead that it just, at some point, one, it's like, man, this guy is crushing it, but he never makes calls like I am. He's not mm. doing this. He's not doing that. Why am I even doing that? I'm sitting in an open house. He's, he's playing golf right now. But if yep. you've got that guy and you've got a, a buddy at the same exact level and, and you guys can kind of be peers in the in the growth um, yeah. can be really helpful. 100% agree with that. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Like like yeah. like minded people is kind of what you're saying. Because yeah, yeah exactly. it's, it is tough to compete with someone who's been, you know, lifting weights for 15 years. You go in there one time. You can't, you're not going to be able to put the same weight on as, as, as they are not even close. Right. Right. And so yeah. to your point, what you have to do when you start is very different than what you have to do in 15 years from now. So I think that the first thing is, is, is pick your thing when it comes to client acquisition and go all out on it. And my recommendation is that it be some type of unpaid outbound approach that puts you in control because yeah, you're, you're really just deciding. I forget which one of you guys said what you said, but it's just a decision. Like if it's going to be outbound phone calls, it's just a decision to talk to 20, 25 people a day. And you can't not make a hundred thousand dollars. If you did that for a year, 30 conversations a day is 7,200 conversations over the course of a 240 working business year. This is what we coach most new agents to right? 7,200 conversation Get you about 75 leads, get you about 40 or so listing appointments. If you are halfway decent and maybe less than average, you convert half of those. I mean, there you go. I mean, that's 20 listings taken your first year just by a decision. It'd be yeah. unrealistic not to win. Yeah. 
And with that, and that's, and that's not even including like the compounding effect that doesn't take into factor that you don't get any better. So like maybe that that's last right. quarter you're converting at 75 and you take five extra listings that bumps you up to maybe 120, 130, but yeah, hundred percent. No, that's a really good point. And, and it also assumes that like, you know, I think a lot of people look at outbound prospecting. I've had so many agents tell us, tell me this in coaching them that it also doesn't assume where you get bit like you're not going to get all your business from like Fizbo's and expireds. And I think a lot of new agents hear that. They're like, all right, I'm, I'm into this thing, Brandon. I'm into direct outbound prospecting. But when I show people like where my business comes from, like the pie chart, it comes from a bunch of different places, you know? And, and I think the point is that also assumes you get no referrals. You get nobody that you know reaching out. You get no buyer, uh, calls. No buyer calls, no sign calls. That's just yeah. pure outbound cold calling, you know? And so that's why I always say success or failure in real estate is a decision. It's, it comes down to a choice. You have to decide not to win. So anyway, yep. that that's uh, I'll call it stage one. That's zero, zero to 100K a year. Then let's get into stage two. Stage two is going from 100K to a multiple six-figure income. So we'll call it 250K just because the numbers are easier that way. So the couple of things that I wrote down is... This is where you see agents start to leverage out of activities that don't lead to new clients. You start to leverage out of the activities that don't lead to additional revenue. And so we always say, what, what gets somebody here won't be the same thing that gets them to that next level. You can't do the same and then expect something different to happen, right? Certainly, in your second year, you're going to have, to Colton's point, the compound effect. You're going to have a major pipeline you're going to get some past clients that reach out. You're going to start to get referrals for sure. That is going to happen. But the bigger scaling piece is getting that licensed admin in place, hiring that licensed admin. And this is a big, 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 big step. I'm not going to just um, sugarcoat it. I mean, this is where most agents stay. Most agents yeah. don't get past that one, 125, that 150, 175, whatever they're capped out as a solo agent, they never get past that. And it's not, nothing wrong with that per se, but we're talking about scaling, right? And so most agents aren't leaders. And we we know that. They, they prove that to themselves. So this has a whole new set of character traits to hire another human being so that you can buy your time back to then mm -hmm. get into the next point I said to double down on what you, you've become really good at. So that to me is what, what phase two looks like. Yeah. yeah, I've got. So a, all well, now you're doing is your highest paid activities. That's you're right. You're just doing exactly getting out of the weeds on all the other things, handing that over, so you can just be laser focused on the things that actually make you money. Yeah, and and most agents can't. Real quick, Cole. Most agents, and I understand it is hard to like relinquish control. Nobody, you know, having that whole syndrome where you think nobody can do it as good as you can. You don't want to touch anybody screwing up your client. I get it. I understand all that. But the agents that scale up, this is the next piece. Go ahead, Colton. And maybe if, and I, and I don't want to take anything away from that because that's definitely, there's only so many hours in a day, no matter how productive you are, but maybe the half a step before that, even that I think a lot of people want to skip because the other side is they just like, they want to do something like that too early. They're overly ambitious. And before they're mm. ready for it, they want to bring somebody on. So maybe the step before that is just optimizing your business and your life. Like, right? are you very focused when you are prospecting? Is your calendar your boss? Like, are you really lockstep? Because the greatest example is, is Asher Black. And it's it's hard to use him as, a, as an example for everyone to model because I don't want to take anything away from the kid at all. He is incredibly disciplined and focused. But even if somebody is half that of Asher, like he pushed phase two all the way to, you know, half a million dollars before he started, you know, bringing somebody on because he really pushed the envelope of it being focused, being disciplined. So I, I would maybe say that the, the step before that is getting yourself dialed in. So that way you can then hand some of that stuff off to somebody else. Yeah. I mean, another really good point, you know, this, this whole thing that we're getting into has like a huge broad brush of an assumption yeah. that people have some decent character traits to your point. Yeah. Th this whole conversation assumes that people, you know, um, none of this will happen if you don't 
follow a schedule, if you're not disciplined, if you're not focused, if you can't be consistent, if you don't have a strong mindset, like none of this can happen. It doesn't matter what we say in the show if if those things aren't in place, because it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Um, mm-hmm. That matters more than anything that we're saying right now. And so now that's a really good point you bring up for sure. Anything else on on that phase? Oh, well, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of context. There's a lot of nuance to this. You know, uh, go ahead, Ben. What were you going to say? No. So, I, I mean, when I think about bringing on an assistant, obviously, I, I 100% agree with Colton. Like, we've got to be dialed in. Um, but I think the biggest thing why people don't do it is because they're – they still have a scarcity mindset, right? So we've got to have that, like you're talking about, that mindset of being abundant, where now I'm, instead of investing my time for the money, now I'm investing my money, which is a big transition because you're so used to holding on to it all. So now I'm putting my money where my mouth is to really get to the next level. Um, And like you said, that's a big assumption just to assume that people all of a sudden have that when for so long you haven't had to put cash in the game to kind of get to the next level um but yeah it's just a big step yeah it's a huge step and i guess the 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 other argument i think colton what you were saying is you an agent can get pretty dang far without an assistant because of their optimizing their character traits they're Mm -hmm. optimizing little little hacks from being more productive you know they've got little systems in place where it doesn't take them an hour and a half to get ready for a listing presentation they they can they can jam out a CMA quickly where some agents, it takes them a half day. You know, it's like, what can you handle? You know, and, and I always tell people that that is a big thing too. Like how much you can handle matters. Like I'll talk to agents that say, well, I can't prospect. I'm like, well, why? He's like, well, I'm too busy. I'm like, tell me about that. Well, because I got two listings and I got two buyers. And I'm like, if that's all you can handle, then yeah, it'll be tough for you to really scale as a solopreneur. And going back to Asher, just because it's fresh in my mind, before he hired an assistant, you know, he's managing 25 active listings, 15 pendings, 15 coming soon, you know, and he's taking 15, 20 listings a month as a one human being show. Yeah. Just a one, one, one man band. You know, um, I like to think that when I was coming up too, I can handle a lot of my plate. I can handle a lot of plates spinning and I can keep them all spinning. And so that comes down to like, I don't know, work, work ethic, not work ethic, but like just bandwidth, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. in different, different categories too. Like for me, it was having that admin, certain admin tasks for me were so overwhelming or I couldn't handle them, but I could handle the sales side, the relationship side of a lot of people. So for me, adding that earlier was huge because it got the things that I absolutely hated off my plate. So I could really. Right grow quicker. Um, so just knowing what you're good at and what you're not, and they're very different muscles. Um, I think, but yeah. Yeah. I think this is just the biggest step, you know, is to, I mean, we're all hitting on it. We could probably sit here for the next hour and a half and talk about just the fact of like taking the dollars that you're so used to being yours as a one person, a one, the, the, the one man band, um, the one person army, you know, and then, bringing another person and and relinquishing some of that money to them, you know, there's, that's a, that's a huge, huge step. So, I mean, we can't, uh, take that lightly. So getting into the next level, um, to me is really amping up your income. At some point you have to consider leveraging out of the buyer side of the business. That's, Mm -hmm. that's the next big step. Again, there's, I'm staying away from the little nuances. There's a lot to this, but pretty much leveraging out of the buy side of the business. So you can double down, and get to the point where you could take 50, 60, 75 listings because now you've got all the admin stuff off of your plate. You've got buyers and showing property and doing all of that completely off of your plate, which allows something magical to happen, which is singular focus. You know, one of the best books ever is, is Essentialism. And so, or The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's a great book. Yeah. And, the, and the idea is that if someone can focus on one thing, because what we all have a finite amount of energy and uh, uh, energy and focus, right? And so to put that into one thing, that one thing can go up extra, you know, uh, to extraordinary levels versus being spread with that amount of focus on many, many things. And so you can bring a buyer agent on your your squad, 
and there's steps before that. But when that person's handling all of the sellers that have to buy a house, they do 25 or 30 buy side transactions with open houses and doing servicing the sellers that need to buy. This is where we can see an agent really scale when they're just listing focus 100%. That to me is the, the third linchpin, if you will, right? Because first level, yes, you guys are right. There's a ton of nuance. There's a ton of context. There's a ton of stuff happening. Linchpin one is the ability to focus on one lead generation channel, okay. being able to master that. Linchpin number two is leveraging out of non-revenue generating activities. And then linchpin number three to me is leveraging out of the buy side of the business. That to me is the most simplistic way to look at going from $0 to you know 500,000 or above is those three steps. Those are the big three for me. Yeah, I'd agree 100%. Yeah. So um, again, and, and I think that to, to your guys' point, just touching on that these aren't small things, these are big, big things, depending on where you're at, you know, in this journey, not looking ahead too soon, not saying, well, I want to get to that point and being able to skip from here to here. Like it is a process. I mean, this might take you three, four five years to make all this come true. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. And, and we don't want to do things because we don't like them or because we don't want to, hey, I'm going to, you know, leverage out of calling because I don't want to do it. It's you've got to prove it first and then do it. You're going to have to work with a ton of buyers before you leverage out of buyers. You're Absolutely. Have to make millions yep. of cold calls before you leverage out a cold call. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, Colton. I was just going to touch on, and we've talked about this in the past, but like when people want to start teams, right? Like too mm. soon and too early. It's just, you know, they, they invest all this time and money over three, five years to make 50 grand and then 70 grand. And maybe like, you know, net profit so little where you would have been much better forcing yourself to grow because you're making 200, 300, 400, five, and you're working 60 hours a week. And so you slowly leverage out your, your net is going to be so much better uh, than were you to just try to bring on a bunch of people and have, and, you know, be a, be a business owner, you know, too soon. Um, yeah, this is, this is, yeah. And I guess that's probably a great place to, to land is, this assumes that you're taking the path of a sales practice, just yeah. the same way a young CPA would, or a young insurance agent would, or a young physician, or a young dentist. You, you see, the dentist model in the beginning is to grow her practice, meaning there she's leveraging. So all that she's doing is filling cavities, making the high dollar productive activity, and then she's got a team of of people that support her practice. What she doesn't do is in the beginning say, okay, I'm going to hire, I'm going to try to hire 25 dentists, make a little bit off of each one of them. And I'm going to sit back and not be a dentist, right? They might do that later in life, but we're talking about is building a sales practice. And so I think, yes, too many people try to build this, this team that is ego-based where they're not having to sell real estate. They don't have to deal with the client. And most of the time, most of the time, people find that not being worth it. They're like, this is too much headache. It's not worth it. There's, the margins are too small. It's just, and so I think if you could stay close to the revenue, stay close to the money for as long as you can, I think you're gonna be a lot better off. So good stuff today, boys. And uh, everybody in the live mastermind, we'll see you guys back for another live pod on, on Monday.